this lesson, we're taking a look at the huge Nirvana hit, Smells Like Teen Spirit. This is part of my Nirvana lesson series, which you can access via the link in the description. In the first lesson, I went over Kurt Cobain's playing style and technique, so well worth checking that video out alongside these song lessons. Now, whether the band were happy about it or not, this track grew way beyond just the grunge scene and became incredibly popular worldwide. I think it's more than fair to call this one a guitar classic at this point. It's a great one to learn and jam along with, great to play at gigs as well, so let's dive in and see how it's done. So let's start with that iconic riff. I get loads of students asking to learn this, so I'll try and explain it as best I can. We're just in standard tuning on the record and from the live footage that I've seen, it seems like they mostly play live in standard as well, but sometimes tune it down a semitone. So just have a quick check before you play along. Uh, I found over the years that the best way to approach this riff with students is to build it up slowly and gradually add one element at a time. So we'll start with just the basic chords, then the core rhythm, then add the scratches in so you can gradually build up the whole thing. So we've got four power chords to play. We've got an F power chord rooted on the first fret of the low E string. Then just shift it up a string for a B flat power chord. Up to the fourth fret on the low E string for an A flat power chord. And then once again move up a string for a D flat power chord. So just to clarify we've got F power chord, B flat power chord, A flat power chord, and D flat power chord. Now the rhythm, the core rhythm, where you actually strum the chords, on the F chord, we're gonna be playing. Now this can either be played down, up, down, or down, down, up. So down, up, down, or down, down, up. I've seen students fall on one side or the other. Doesn't really seem to make a difference when you're playing the full riff. I've always gone down, up, down, but it's fine if you do it the other way. After the F chord, we're moving up to the B flat and we're just gonna do two down strums. Nice and simple. So if we put those two together, we've either got down, up, down, 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 or alternatively, down, down, up, down, down. And then just shift your hand up three frets. So starting on the A flat and you're gonna do the exact same, two, uh, same rhythms on the A flat and the D flat. So down, up, down, 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 or down, down, up, down, down. And then if you put all of them together. I definitely make sure that you can play it like that first and then think about putting the scratches in between. Next, it's time to add the scratches. So that's this sound. Now the technique for this one is just to touch the strings with the fretting hand as lightly as possible. Cause if you press too hard, you're gonna end up fretting notes. And if you press too lightly, you might have some open strings ringing out. So you're just finding the sweet spot where you're touching the strings enough to mute them, but not fret them. And then when you strum, just get that nice percussive sound. Now we need to add this between the chord changes. So between the F and the B flat. Just think waka waka like Shakira. Bet you didn't think that we were talking about Shakira in a Nirvana lesson, but there you go. So we're doing F, then waka waka B flat. So take your time getting used to that one. Moving from the B flat to the A flat is also tricky because we're moving horizontally as well as vertically because we're changing onto the, the root note on the bottom string. So it just takes a little bit of getting used to. But just try and keep the right hand strumming in between the chord changes and you'll just gradually develop that left hand technique. Build that muscle memory so it knows exactly how hard to touch the strings to keep them quiet. Uh, then between the A flat and the D flat, it should sound the same as between the F and the B flat. So once again, you've got your, your waka waka sound. And then another tricky horizontal movement from the D flat back to the F. So the whole thing with the scratches. As I say, tricky technique, but adds a lot of groove to the riff. 
Now I want to make a note that he doesn't always include every single scratch in every single chord change, so improvise it a little bit, just kind of play it as you hear it and feel it. I think it's probably a good approach not to be too precise with exact strumming patterns in Nirvana's songs, because Nirvana's music isn't really about perfection, it's more about attitude, so just let it be a little bit messy and improvised. Now in terms of structure in the track, uh, this riff is played twice, just in isolation with a clean guitar, then the distortion kicks in and you play it another four times with the band so you might want to kick in your distortion pedal when you're playing along uh, and in terms of practicing just make sure that you're practicing it in time even if it's much slower that'll be far more beneficial than playing it fast with gaps so if you're practicing and it's sounding like this <laughs> it's just not going to help you get to where you want to go with it. Instead you'd be much better off just reducing the tempo keep that right hand moving and even though it's slow you'll be absorbing the feel and developing the muscle memory and then when you speed it up you'll find it a lot easier taking a look at the verse now and I think a good place to start is actually the bass line and uh, that way if you've got a looper pedal you can lay down uh, this part and then play the guitar part over the top or if you've got another guitar player that you play with you can play one part each. Uh, helps to put an octave pedal down so you get the actual octave of the bass but of course you can practice without that as well uh, and we're just going to be down picking eighth notes of the root notes that we played in the riff so remember we had the F the B flat, the A flat and the D flat. So first fret bottom string, first fret A string, fourth fret bottom string and fourth fret A string. And as I say, just down picking, so. A little bit of palm muting sounds good as well. So start with that. Then we're gonna add the guitar part over the top, which sounds like this. As you can hear, there's quite a lot of effects going on. So I've got a chorus pedal on, I've got quite a lot of reverb and a little bit of delay. So have a mess about with those effects and see if you can get a similar sort of sound. Now all I'm doing is the first finger is playing the fifth fret on the G string and second finger is playing the sixth fret on the B string. And we're just picking them one after the other. Sometimes this part is taught with a bar on the first fret on the top two strings. That works fine as well, so play whichever one you want. I've seen in videos that Kurt plays it up here on the uh, the fifth fret, so you might want to you might want to play it that way for authenticity. And it's also really important that you get the timing right here because we're coming in on beat two, not beat one. So if I count us in, we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So count it like that if you have to, but probably best if you can try and get it by ear. And then when the pre-chorus comes in in the song, this is where we start building up to the chorus. This time we're just going to play the same two notes, but we're going to play them a little bit more often and we are going to put it on the beat this time. So we're bang on beat one, we're just going to play one note per beat. So just G string, B string, G string, B string. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then just gradually build it up. A little bit of vibrato sounds good as well. And you might want to kick a little bit of distortion on like I did in the demo, uh, but just build in that section up until the chorus kicks in. Into the chorus now, and for the most part, it's just exactly the same as the main riff. So literally just copy and paste from the start. <laughs> But we do have this new part that comes in at the end of the chorus. So what's going on here is we're starting with an F power chord. Just take the hand off and hit the open strings and then immediately back to that F power chord. So it's quite snappy. Once again, F, open F. Shift the power chord up one fret to the F sharp and do two down strums. Then we've got this. Kind of weird bendy note that is ha happens when he sings hey. So you get this. 
the guitar kind of follows the vocals there. Now the technique for this, what I'm doing is I'm using my first finger to cover all six strings, just rest on them lightly, like the scratches in the intro, so we can reuse that technique. Uh, so it's keeping all the strings nice and quiet. And then my second finger is playing the third fret on the G string. I'm actually strumming a bunch of the strings, but the only one that you really hear is the one fretted by the middle finger. <laughs> And I'm just pulling it down in like a blues curl kind of style. It's not like a big bend or anything like that. It's just kind of gradually raising the pitch. So if you put that into the riff. And again, you know, it's Nirvana style. So don't worry if it gets a little bit messy. If you do have accidental strings ringing out, it kind of adds to it, to be honest. You don't want it to be too clean. So after you've got this part. The start of the next riff is exactly the same. But rather than going up to the F sharp, we're gonna slide all the way up to uh, an A sharp or a B flat on the sixth fret. We're gonna strum that twice, then move down two frets. So G sharp or A flat, strum that twice. And that forms the ending of the second phrase. So if we put all of that together, And again. And that gives us the ending of the chorus. Now it's worth noting that this doesn't happen in the final chorus. In the final chorus, you just stick to the main riff section uh, and he's singing a denial and just repeating that. Uh, and you just keep playing around those main four chords from the intro until the end of the song. The only part left to look at is the guitar solo, which comes in after the second chorus. Now this solo is just played over the main progression and he actually just plays the verse melody, but on guitar. So if it's one of your first solos, a good way to get your head around it is to actually sing the verse while you're playing the solo. And if it all matches up, then you know you're doing the right thing. So you can have this. I found it hard, it's hard to find a well, whatever, never mind. So that can be quite a good tactic going into this one. Uh, sound wise, you want to crank the distortion and also add a bit of chorus or some sort of modulation here, which can be a little bit uncommon for guitar solos, but works really well in this track. So definitely go with it. Uh, a little bit of reverb and delay for ambience might be nice as well. And I also want to mention for those who know their scales that we're playing in patterns one and two of F minor here. So he's using a little bit of the full natural minor, but if you just know your pentatonic scales, patterns one and two, that would be a good framework for uh, understanding this solo. I've got lessons on all the pentatonic patterns, so I'll pop a link to those in the video cards. So for the actual solo, we're starting with a second finger slide into the fifth fret of the G string. Then first finger on fourth fret of B, third finger on sixth fret of B. Now these three notes are actually the top of the house shape in pattern two, if you're familiar with that, but that's how this solo is starting. Then we're gonna slide down and first finger is gonna land on the first fret of the G string. Followed by third finger jumping up to the fourth fret of the uh, B string, pick it and then bend up a tone. And relax the bend. So it's pick, then pick and bend and then relax. So, so far we're starting in pattern two, jump to pattern one, pick, pick bend, and then sustain the natural note once the bend is released. Uh, after that fourth fret, we're going down to first finger, playing the second fret. This is the natural minor part rather than the pentatonic part, but don't worry about that if you haven't looked at the scales yet, but it is worth getting into eventually. So second fret with first finger, and then first fret with first finger. Second fret with second finger. First fret with first finger. Then we're moving on to G string, third finger playing third fret. First finger playing first fret. Then we've got a similar move uh, with the bend, similar to what we had before. So we're picking the third fret note on the G string with the third finger, then pick and bend and release. And then we're ending with first finger on the first fret and then the open string.
Okay, now that's the main melody and it just repeats that twice, so... Now after the second repetition, we're getting into mimicking the melody of the pre-chorus, which is the hello, hello, how low parts. So they're gonna sound like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting with first finger on first fret of G string, then just picking the open G string. And you're gonna play those two notes uh, three times in a row, so. And then my way of playing this is I will pick with the first finger on the first fret and then pull off to the open string. Then I'll pick the open string and then land the third finger on the third fret of the D string. So that ending is. So I'm going pick, pull off, pick, pick. It's hard to hear if that's exactly what happens. I've seen people play it where they pick all the notes. So pick, 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 pick. Uh, but I just feel like when you pull off that first open string, it just takes the velocity away a little bit. And then when the pick comes back in, it just feels a little bit better. Uh, but that's just my preference. So you can copy that if you like, or you can just pick them all. Uh, and just like the pre-chorus, we have all of this four times. So. And then on the record, that last note sustains for absolutely ages, gets loads of feedback. Sounds really cool, but you need a lot of gain and a lot of volume to do that. So pretty lucky if you're able to mimic that exactly the way it was. But that gives you the full solo. I would definitely recommend if you've got a looper, uh, laying down the chorus chords and then practicing the solo over the top. And also try singing along while you're playing the solo, like I demonstrated before, just to make sure you're getting it right. So there you have all the parts, just gotta jam along and make sure you get them all in the right order. Try and nail the different guitar sounds as well as that aggressive attitude, but most importantly, just have fun with it. You know, this track's got great energy and that's probably what made it so popular. Uh, pretty much anyone that you play it to should recognize it as well, although probably best to avoid playing it in guitar shops because it's probably one of the ones that they've heard enough of already. Remember, the full Nirvana series is linked in the description. Be sure to subscribe for more content and I'd really appreciate you giving this video a like if you found it useful and I'll see you in the next lesson.